Hi, my name is Dave Hiddeman. I'm the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to show you a couple of tools for when you have uh, more complicated shapes that you want to put in the model. Something besides just a, a simple extrusion like a wide flange or an angle or something like that. Here in my model I have a bar grading panel that's been modeled of individual parts. So these are all just flat bars that have been modeled in. Uh, and then I also have a cable rail bracket that I built. Um, made up of obviously a lot of uh, smaller pieces. Now the problem with these is that right now if I tried to make a drawing or anything like that they would have multiple piece marks like each segment of each one would have a separate piece mark which is obviously not desirable. So I want to use uh, some of the tools to group them and join them together as a single object. Um, in single object in my bill of materials, a single object to be ordered and tracked, um, th you know that kind of thing. So the first one we're going to talk about is this uh, command called attach to part. Um, so attach to part is found under your edit tab and under added material you have the option to attach to part. So the way this works is you pick one object to be kind of the main, uh, the main body or the main piece of this new part. So I'm just going to pick the, the main part of this, um, this bracket. Uh, so I'll, I'll pick the middle and then I'll pick all of the things that I want to be attached to it. So that's all the little, the little facets and all the little segments. And then finally I middle mouse click. Uh, and what that does is it joins them all together, which I can see when I highlight it, they all light up as one object now. And that's true for my piece marks, that's true for my bill of material, like all of those things are going to be one part. Now, um, one of the benefits here is that you can actually see there's almost a, a shell of the added piece that's been uh, kind of left behind. And this shell retains the properties of the original part that was used to model that segment. So that means that if need be, I can come in here and I can modify this. I can I can stretch and adjust some of the dimensions of this, uh, and then I can I can take this and I can put this inside of a custom component if I want to make this a repeatable object. If I want to create a lot of them, I can even control some of those uh, the shell or some of the added part attributes through a custom component if I want to. So this is one great way to get something together as one object, especially if you need to have it slightly parametric. Now sometimes you don't need something that's going to be parametric. You need something that's just going to be a fixed shape, uh, something like this grading panel or a grading tread or maybe a handrail bracket or something like that. So we can go in and model them all as single parts, as I have here. Um, now this is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to create something called an item, which I've talked about in another video. Uh, but an item can come from somewhere else. We can bring them in from SketchUp. We can bring them in from Inventor. We can bring them in from a lot of different other 3D modeling programs. Um, but we're going to show you just how to round trip it inside of Tecla. So after you model in all of your parts, and for an item it has to be down here at the model origin. You can see there's my coordinate icon. So I'll go ahead and I'll select all the parts that I want to be part of this item. I'll go up to my file menu and I'll choose export. I have to first send this out as a format that I can read back in as an item. Uh, I prefer SketchUp. Other formats will work such as IFC, but I just prefer SketchUp. So I'll export as a SketchUp file and I'll give this a name. I'll just call this uh, grading panel simple enough and I'll choose create selected and the export is complete. So if I now want to bring this in as an item uh, I can go to my catalogs and I have here a shape catalog. So your shape catalog is going to be stuff brought in from other softwares or imported as items. Uh, as you can see I've already got a few in here uh, so I'll choose import. I'll go ahead and I'll grab that SketchUp file and then uh, what that will do is get added as a solid to my shape catalog. Now that it's been added as a shape catalog, I can use this with the item command. So on the steel tab, I'll go to item. I can come here and choose grading panel from my shape catalog, and then I can simply model it in. So now this is a great way to get a fixed shape as a repeatable object into the model. Um, especially something like this that I may need several of them. Now these items can also be used inside of custom components. Uh, so if you need to use them as a, a custom stair tread or something like that, uh, this is a perfect way to create one of those types of objects. There's also an extension available on the Tecla warehouse that can help speed up this process uh, and make it a little bit easier. One of the benefits of the extension is it does not require you to have the parts modeled in at the, at the origin um, the way this process does. Uh, so just take a look at how that works. Um, let me go ahead and I'll copy these parts over to something that's uh, basically not the model origin. So we'll copy this over here. And we'll use the extension to create uh, an item out of this. 
Uh, so the first thing you need to do is you need to set your work plane. So you can do this on the view tab. Um, the work plane has to be where you want the origin of the part to be. So basically like how we modeled it down earlier uh, at the origin, but we just have to set that now uh, in its current position. Uh, so for this one, it's pretty simple. I'll go to work plane uh, using two points, and then I'll just pick somewhere in the middle of that, and I have to set my positive X. Um, so wherever this this collection of parts is, I just want to make sure that I set the work plane kind of local to that part. Uh, once that's done, you can go to your Applications and Components side pane, and you can run the Create Items from Objects extension. Now this is a relatively simple extension, um, but it kind of walks you through the steps. So first you set the work plane as it's defined here. You go ahead and you select the objects and you go ahead and give this a name. So I'll just call this uh, grading from extension so we can see the difference between this one. Um, if there's already a item with that name, you can choose to overwrite. Um, I'm creating a new name here, so I'll just leave that blank and I'll go ahead and hit create. So that's simple, it's done. It tells me down in the bottom left that the shape was created uh, and added to the shape catalog. So let's take a look real quick. I'll go to my catalogs, I'll go to my shape catalog, and here we go, grading from extension. Um, if we wanna see what that looks like, I'll go ahead and model one in. So I'll reopen my item tool here. I'll say let's do grading from extension and pick two points to create it. And we get basically the same thing. So like I said, um, it accomplishes the same um, the same final effect as doing it manually, but the ex extension obviously makes that process faster. So hopefully you find this video helpful. Uh, again, if you have any uh, questions about any of these workflows, uh, feel free to reach out to your local help desk. And um, thanks for watching.